guys, welcome to my channel. It's Little Z here with my financial advisor, Teddy. Today, we'll be giving you some tips to hopefully save you some money this year and for the upcoming event, Valentine's Day. Why? Because I don't want you to be in my situation a few weeks ago when I came back from vacation. Story time! Dun, dun, dun. So a couple weeks ago, I got a phone call from a very close friend. She said, let's hang out. And I was gonna go, yeah, 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 let's do so. But then I told her something she just couldn't comprehend. Cause why? I looked down at my empty wallet. And oh my head, I go, oh shit, oh shit, I got no money. Life is so twistily unfunny. I spent all my money on my vacay, and now I'm back to the state called Broke. So then I could tell her, No, I can't go. I'm sick. Go on without me. As I put down the phone, I scream so loud, just go, Oh no! Five minutes later, I still scream, Oh no! An hour later, I still scream, Oh no! So if you don't want to be in a situation like me, follow this tip. Come on, let's listen up. So there are four tips we want to share with you today. First is to stay as anonymously as possible online. Why? Have you ever wondered why that it's so hard for you to find a good deal, or why you just never find one? Well, that's because companies follow your searches through your cash and history. Well, now you know. There's four steps over here that can help you stay anonymous online. Step number one is to clear your cache and history every time you use or go on a website. Step number two is to go in incognito mode. That mode is offered in all the browser and what it is is basically a private mode that will clear your cache and history every time you exit. Step number three is to use the guest checkout. So there are times when I go on the website and I'm at the checkout stage and it will say, oh, create an account, lock into your existing account, or do a guest checkout. A lot of times I figure that by doing the guest checkout, I can get discount because they treat me as like a new customer. Now this doesn't happen to all of the website, but it's very helpful. Um, when you don't have to give away your personal information and you may get discounts as well. And lastly, is to never go online shopping when signing in into a service account. A good example of this is um, when I'm into Google and I'm logged into my Gmail account and I'm trying to search for a product, then I realize that I go back to Facebook and that product appear again over there. That's because I have an advertisement ID that now link to different um, advertisement uh, merchants such as Facebook or Oracle. Now use those four steps, be smart when you do your online shopping. The second tip we want to share with you is to carry large bills around. The last thing you want to do when you're trying to go on a save money journey is to spend money on impulsive buying. Buying that on things that you don't need, things that so small or so big but sometimes it just adds up and why do I know because I understand how you feel I'm guilty of this when I have bad days I just go shopping because it just makes the whole world seems like a better place not that some ideas but you know what I mean like unicorns flying around but thanks to my cute little financial advisor here um, I have done a lot of stepping up and now I'm fully in control of my impulsive buying. I'm going to share with you a few steps. So the first thing you need to do is to stop using debit cards or credit cards to pay for stuff, but use cash only. The reason is because when you use a debit card or a credit card, you don't realize um, how much you're paying. You just tap because a lot of times they have like the pay pass now, where you just tap if um, the amount is under $100. But when you actually use cash, you're like, holy shit, that's actually a lot of money I'm spending. Or well, wow, I have been spending quite a lot of money the past week or the past month. The next thing, you need to step up your game if you have really bad self-control, is to only carry large bills. The reason is because when you carry small bills, you may just think, oh, it's just $2 or just $5 or $10. But when you carry like $50 and you're trying to buy a gum, you know, 
you realize, oh shit, do I really want to break my bill just to buy something? For me, I hate breaking my bills because you start having a little piece of paper weight to a lot of paper weight and coins and that's not heavy. My bag is already heavy, so I'm done with carrying additional weight. So I usually never ever break my bills unless I have to. And that's the purpose of me carrying that large bills is it should only be used for emergency purposes. Like I usually make lunch, I have my own um, presto card to go on transportation. I don't need to buy these impulsive stuff anymore. So hopefully this tip will help you to control your impulsive buying habits or stop it. The third tip we want to share with you is the most simplest tip of all today. And that is to simply ask for a drink, whether that's a coffee or a tea, in a larger cup. For example, go to the Departments or Starbucks and ask for a medium coffee in a large cup. A lot of times, the person serving you won't know exactly how much is a medium cup in a large cup, so they tend to give you a little bit more. Ding ding! Free coffee, free tea, right there for you. And the last tip we have for you is the most important tip of all. Like honestly, if you didn't learn anything or didn't listen throughout this video, listen to this. Because it's going to save you a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Why? A lot of people spend money most of the time is because they need to replace something or repair something. So take care of your damn stuff. Those expensive stuff, the expensive Uggs boots that you got, those Sephora uh, makeup stuff, that mad